Hi everybody, welcome to Point Du Hawk. This is the best I could do, um, given the lack of foam at my house. So I did sort of a stepped hill here, and each step will be a run move for the Rangers. I'll show you the forces in a moment. And then you have the observation bunker out on the point, a very heavily cratered Point Du Hawk. Numerous six inch barbed wire entanglements, defensive works for the Germans, including Tobruk bunkers, trenches, an anti aircraft gun. So it's not exactly like you'll find in the Overlord book, but it's fairly close. That cliff right there can be assaulted, this cliff cannot. So they are kind of forced into one avenue of approach. For the setup, the Germans will have two sniper teams. I know that's not probably some kind of competition ready list thing, but I felt it was appropriate. So two sniper teams, a medium machine gun in a Tobruk bunker, another medium machine gun in a Tobruk bunker way back there, three medium machine guns scattered around the table one of them is way back here and then they'll have a veteran grenadier squad and I'm actually giving them two light machine guns since this is a defensive uh, unit and a lieutenant they can be placed anywhere and then a 3.7 centimeter flat gun back there so the objective of the Rangers as they assault Point to Hawk is to seize the open gun pit and the concrete bunker. There will be a reserve German force coming on uh, beginning turn three. And those forces are both veteran, uh, correction, one is a veteran grenadier squad with two light machine guns, another is an engineer squad. So tough nut to crack. I did bump up the German forces pretty strongly in their their morale and training but they're going to be heavily pinned by a naval bombardment that happens at the beginning of the scenario everybody's going to start with at least a pin on them assaulting are four ranger squads all veteran all rangers with good weapons a bazooka team a light mortar and a forward observer team and two lieutenants so they have plenty of leadership first lieutenants uh, the squads vary a little bit some have three submachine guns some have two but they they do vary a little bit so here we are going to hear from the faceless german commander standing off camera probably fresh off a day of surfing what the Germans are going to do at Point du Hoc. Well, we've decided to place a five-man squad in the trench, another five-man squad next to the Overlook, along with the commanders, two crack sniper teams, and just a small little MMG to strafe down the cliff face here as the uh, Americans are trying to scale the heights. We have a few MMGs scattered about, uh, and then we have this guy who's going to basically have to get up and get moving to get to the fight. All right, that's the German plan. For the Americans, the Rangers are going to lead the way up the cliffs. Our plan is to take the first bunker, then the second bunker, then the third, and eventually take the day. Very simple. Faceless American commander. <laughs> And we know the Americans have a special move, don't don't they? Oh yes, it's uh, great uh, commanding Rangers. The Rangers will lead the way before turn one, so we will come back at the close of turn one to show you what all happened. First thing we have to do is bombard the heck out of the German defenders. Here we are at Point Du Hoc, end of turn one. So the first thing that happened was the rangers were able to advance to the first level of the cliff because of the free run order that they get as rangers. 
So you'll notice we're closing in on the wire. The other thing is the preparatory bombardment definitely suppressed the Germans quite a bit and removed some of the barbed wire entanglements. So at this little gap here, there's no barbed wire stopping them. Over here, another uh, section of the barbed wire was removed. So the Rangers have a little better uh, path to assault up the cliff than they initially thought before the preparatory bombardment. Over on the right side, this German sniper team that's inside the bunker, they're at this little slit window here, they attempted to fire on the platoon leader on the far side of the table, on that, that left side platoon, there's a lieutenant. They didn't hit, uh, so it was a wasted shot, but that's okay. I mean, you know, the sniper team is dangerous, but their major worry probably is that that rifle squad with one pin on it, that's that purple heart, uh, is getting a little bit closer to them and the squad behind the entrenchment. The American mortar fired and hit on the very first shot on the rifle squad that was behind the sandbag, killed one of the men, unfortunately didn't kill the three men that were under the template, but more importantly put three whole pins on that squad after they had cleared the pin that was on them from the preparatory bombardment. The sniper team and the Tobruk bunker weren't successful. I believe they fired and missed, is that correct, gentlemen? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So the Tobruk bunker was fairly suppressed. He tried, he, he fired, and he didn't score any hits. And the sniper team, same thing. Medium machine gun in the middle over here is definitely threatened by this ranger squad that's climbing up the cliff towards it. But they rallied because they knew that, hey, they're, they have an opportunity to fire a, a heck of a burst at point blank range if they lean out over that sandbag. Over here, this squad's just waiting. They know that those rangers are going to come up that gap and they're going to be ready when they come up. Over here, the forward observer for the naval guns is, uh, is definitely enjoying being outside of sniper range. But what he doesn't know is when he climbs over the cliff, he's going to be greeted by a medium machine gun and a medium machine gun in a Tobruk bunker and these gentlemen here in the trench. So... It's a tough nut to crack. It's been a bloody turn. This American squad lost three men. They got pummeled by the squad of Germans that was hit by the mortar. And, uh, and they're feeling it. But the rest of the Rangers are looking pretty good as they climb up this cliff. So uh, Rangers lead the way, right? <laughs> okay, at the end of turn two, we are going to commence filming from the German point of view and we see some Americans starting to come up over the edge of the cliff and there they are the Rangers are getting close they've come through the gap in the wire at that point they took a machine gun position right here course they're pretty exposed the flak gun did try and take a few shots at those guys they could just make out the tops of their helmets but they chewed up that entrenchment to their front that Tobruk bunker over here did some shooting didn't kill anybody but you know the Americans are more exposed as they come up the cliff the further up the cliff you go the more exposed you are to the weapon systems that are to the rear like this medium machine gun that moved into that crater. So it's becoming an interesting battle. Over here, this squad did not like having a mortar zeroed in on it, so it moved over to this corner, but they're gonna be in a beautiful position to engage that ranger squad that's leading the way. Sniper team did put a pin on the lieutenant for the far American platoon over there. This sniper team here did a kill. Who did they kill? It was a, a sergeant. They killed a sergeant yeah. from the far platoon over there. The squad that actually made it up the hill. Their sergeant was killed. We're going to zoom around Point du Hawk here. This squad 
Let me zoom out. Didn't climb further up the cliff. They moved towards this gap with an advance move, the, the gap in the cliff right there. And they did manage to suppress that German Tobruk bunker up top. We'll zoom in. So that fella, while he didn't take any hits to the team, he was heavily suppressed. Uh, so actually, you know what? I think he, did he have to go down? No, he just got the heck pinned out he of him. He went down. He went down. Yeah, he did. My bad, he went down. Sorry, guys, I've been corrected. It's hard to remember from turn to turn. And then this bazooka team here did manage to put a rocket through the slit on that bunker, but didn't kill anybody. Just put some pins on that sniper team, but that's going to be a good thing. Over on the left, we have one ranger squad that is at the top of the cliff, in front of the Germans in the trench, took some casualties from them, but there's another squad waiting to come up behind them. So it's a bloody assault, but if those Rangers can gain the high ground, it's going to be a good thing. The forward observer team is hanging out on the left out there. They don't want to expose themselves to the top of the cliff, but they also don't want to fratricide these troops over here should they call artillery on the point so they're gonna wait for a better target and that is the end of turn two going into turn three the Germans will start to check for reinforcements and uh, so it'll be interesting as we move on as this Ranger squad struggles up the cliff towards the Tobruk bunker at the end of turn three it's an almost vacant position that they are looking at but it wasn't because of mass casualties inflicted by rangers upon Germans. As a matter of fact, that bazooka missed their target. The mortar missed their target. The ranger squad there went down after failing because of that pin. And they never shot? No. No. The German positions were vacated for entirely different reasons. So the first event that happened was this sniper team had a couple pins on them. And when they went to shoot... They foobarred, and they ran away like little babies. But then, we suspect, that sparked a chain reaction. Because this squad over here also went to do an order. They were planning on moving, and they then foobarred. But unlike their sniper friends, they didn't run away. No, no. They turned their guns on their platoon leader, who was standing beside him, and they hosed him down. The runner was killed. The platoon leader decided that this was not a battlefield to remain on, so long as his own men were intent upon killing him. Over here in the Tobruk bunker, he's still fighting. He's oblivious to all the shooting that happened behind him. Hopefully the squad that's to his rear doesn't become a threat to him as well. All right, so that is the actual point, and it's pretty much been cleared more by the Germans than anything. However, this little flame marker is actually an artillery spotting round because our naval observers are going to ensure that that point is completely cleared. Hopefully they don't fratricide our little friends down here, though. On the left flank, the rangers are climbing the cliffs and assaulting swinging rifle butts and firing submachine guns and 45 pistols at point-blank range. They seized the trench, killed the German squad that was in it. They've met some resistance. The Tobruk bunker is firing down on them. The flak gun is firing on them. And this squad here, yes, they're SS uniforms, but they're actually just German grenadiers. They came on from reserve and have occupied this key position that the Rangers plan on capturing. So at this point, it's a lot of open ground to assault across. A lot of chaos is going on. But from the American perspective, we think the Rangers can do it. And they're going to lead the way all the way to the Bocage. That is the end of turn three. And a turn four. How is everybody feeling? Anybody want to weigh in? I feel great. I think we're going to win. That was the Americans. Things have been 
switching back and forth here. Let's see how it switches this time. It's, uh, okay. And that's the Germans. It's just getting pretty wild. I agree with, with that assessment from one of the German commanders there. So, here we have it. Point to Hawk. I really thought that this Ranger squad would suppress the heck out of that machine gun in the Tobruk bunker, but they went down after failing their orders. The bazookas moved up. They're going to try and climb the cliff and do some shooting. Mortar team is firing on the Tobruk bunker. Our naval observer did not get his fire, but he shifted the round to try and trap uh, that that German squad or the sniper teams or possibly get it closer to these German reinforcements in the middle. There was a mad firefight. These fellows in the trench right here received fire from every direction. To Brook Bunkers, flak guns, the reinforcement squad that the Germans brought on. Matter of fact, the fire was so hot that these fellows here decided to foobar and uh, run back to the cliff's edge. So that wasn't cool. Two lieutenants are in the trench trying to keep order with that unit that now has, is it four or five pins, I think? It's kind of crazy. But after all the hail of lead and shot and shell was directed at these few guys, this, this squad here decided it was safe to move up to the crater on the very last dice of the turn, where they're in a very good position good to assault the objective next turn. So that is the end of turn four, but it is a nail biter. It is an absolute nail biter. Meanwhile, meanwhile, these Navy guys over here, these Navy observers are still calling fire kind of close to our troops. They're like, oh, it's the Navy, the Army Navy game before football was really cool. So uh, they're going to try and, you know, win over Army with big shells. That's the end of turn four. Here we are at the end of turn five. It has been a bruiser of a game. The Germans received more reinforcements. An engineer squad came up, fired with a flamethrower into these rangers, cooked three of them, put three pins on them. Another pin was sustained by a sniper firing at them. The Americans thinking it's very important to keep this squad intact and in command, move two lieutenants into that trench, one from each of the platoons. These squads are going to have to step up. Don't worry about the, the pins that they have. And reach down, grab some intestinal fortitude, and roll on. Over here, the Navy's still trying to figure out just what exactly they're going to do with their indirect fire. The spotter round was moved yet again. Hopefully it will do something this turn. On this flank, these four rangers bucked up, shook off a, a pin, knocked out that Tobruk bunker. They had a little help from that bazooka, which scored a stellar hit. So this point, the point of Point du Hawk, is clear of enemy presence. However, they do have a sniper team back here in the middle, as well as a medium machine gun, which both of those units have been adding to the uh, the bloodbath that is the middle of this battlefield. We could be rolling into the last turn. We don't actually know. Because at turn 6, at the end of turn 6, we roll to see if there's a 7th turn. And uh, we are about to enter turn 6. Right now the objective is contested between these two squads. He who survives wins the game. Who's going to win? Here are the positions at the end of the game, at the end of turn six. The game ended with turn six. We did check to see if another round of naval bombardment would have come in over here on turn seven, and it would have had we decided to go on. But it's quarter to nine at night, and the game did actually end at turn six. So here we are. In the middle, a lieutenant. We're going to call him Lieutenant Gelling for... My favorite cadet ever, um, in my last job, has advanced to the edge of the crater and shot point blank into the German squad, gloriously missing. Many rounds of artillery have fallen from the battleship USS Texas 
definitely suppressing the German positions, but not being all that devastating, really, as far as killing people. An American squad has advanced to the middle of the battlefield, where it did wipe out a German squad that was occupying the ground out there and trying to support their friends. These German engineers did a little more damage on the Americans in the crater, but it wasn't super effective. The flamethrower didn't go off this turn and, and hit anybody. Back here, more American Rangers are rallying to go forward. And again, we mentioned the naval gunfire specialists are calling in another round of artillery. This Tobruk bunker did fire on this squad, did put a pin on the squad, did it also kill someone? Uh, no. No? Okay. So it didn't kill anybody. Bazooka climbed the cliff, the mortar is finally getting up the cliff, and these American troopers have finally got up the cliff to the Tobruk bunker that they knocked out. German snipers have been very effective in pinning the Americans. They were definitely doing a nice job. And this machine gun back here has done a nice job pinning the Americans. So all in all, it was a heck of a game. Point to Hawk ends in a draw with a bloody contested middle. American player, Jesse, do you have any comments? I would just like to point out that no American squads were lost. Uh, six German squads were completely defeated. That is true. The Germans lost six dice. The Americans lost none. They hung on by the skin of their teeth. German commander, any comments? Uh, yes, Jesse, I would like to point out that we held the ground. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Casualties are to be expected. But well played. It was a very theatrical. It was an awesome game. It was a fun game. Yeah, really fun. Good game, everybody. Thank you for watching.